Hi, this is Tony Apple, and uh, I've just added physics via JBox2D to my game engine, pluggable physics, so you don't need to use it, but you can. And uh, I'd like to show you how to program with it um, so you can get a feeling of the API. So I'm starting here with a simple application created from the NetBeans template. I'll remove that stuff here. Give my application a nice name. And I'll add two integers, the score of the player, starting with zero, and the score of the computer. Okay, so in order to use it, I'll first need to create a game canvas. And give it dimensions. So there's basically two dimensions. I need to tell the system the real dimensions of the play field and the viewport basically that should be displayed. So in our case in Pong that's the same. And since I want to use physics, I'll create a physics engine. And Pong doesn't need gravity, so a simple box to D, VEC2, 0, 0. And the next thing we need to do is we need to tell the, uh, the system how to map the world coordinates to the um, screen coordinates. I'll simply create a factor of 100 and I need to set an offset so we can see something on the screen. Since we've got 600, um, the screen is 600 pixels high, I use 6 here which will uh, give us an offset of 600 pixels. So set this camera on the physics engine. And now I need to use, I need to tell um, my canvas that it should use physics. And this is done via updaters. An updater is just something that is running on every game pulse. And we need a layer where we can display um, the score. So let's add a new layer. We won't do anything on pulls but we will draw something. Okay, let's say graphics context, fill text, first my score, player score, my score player it is. And let's say do that at 350 and 60. And the score of the computer will be displayed as 450. And what we also need to do is need we need to set a font. So it's not displayed too small. So let's use static message font. 
and well, now there are now 36. Okay, this should display something for us. And next thing is uh, we add the debug layer. the canvas. The debug layer can be used to, um, to do some debug drawing of the physical objects in the physics engine. So otherwise we would need to uh, add a sprite layer to display the sprites, but actually that doesn't work <laughs> that well yet, so we'll do it like that. And we'll ask the physics engine To create a wall for us. That's a helper method. We can also just uh, use the world in order to, uh, to do that manually. I've actually included some nice builders that help you create objects very easily. Create shapes and, and, and bodies very easily. So this is upper wall and we'll also create a lower wall Let's see here and next we'll add a ball to the game and for this add ball we will create a method um, so let's say add ball uh, to the canvas Give it the canvas. We need to give it the physics engine. We need to give it coordinates. So let's say 400 by 300, which is the exact center of the screen. So let's create the method add ball. So first we create a sprite. Give it its parent canvas, give it a name that we can later use to retrieve it. Give it X and Y coordinates, let's call this X and Y, it's easier to understand. And what else do we need? We need to give it a size, 20 by 20, um, and a lookup. I'm using NetBeans Lookups API um, in order to make sprites extensible. So uh, later on, I'm trying to retrieve um, the objects from the lookup so I can manipulate them. That is something that I do in the actions because in the actions I only get the sprite and uh, I don't want to cast it. I ask the sprite for its lookup and uh, I'll get the body from there and then I can apply forces. Well, you will see that. So the nice thing about the physics engine is that you can also use it to uh, create some default stuff for you, like a default body. You just pass in a sprite, tell it a couple of the most important um, the most important features. So we want a dynamic body here because it's it should move. Um, and next thing is restitution. We want it to be absolutely bouncy. Um, then friction and uh, density, which is used to uh, to calculate the mass of the body. Uh, let's assign this to a return value. Ball body. And the ball body we tell we set to fixed rotation, which is um, because we do not want to spin uh, the block around uh, like it would do in realistic physics and like uh, Box2D would make it. And we'll give our ball body some initial velocity. Of four 
point one, and then we need to add it to the um, to the canvas. Okay. Next thing we need to do is we need to add some behavior to the canvas because the canvas should check uh, whether our um, our ball has left the uh, the play field and um, if so it should remove the ball and create a new uh, create a new one and um, increase the score so let's say add behavior new action and inside of action we will override the perform method We want this action to be continuously active, so we return true. If we return false here, the, uh, the action will be disabled and removed. That's a very simple system, but it works quite nice. So, first thing we need is we need our, to ask our playing field for the ball. And we can do so by asking for the name. So if nothing happens, if we don't find the sprite, let's just return. And if we find it, we will ask our sprite for its lookup and we will look up the body. So, get the body. And now we would like to find out if our uh, ball has left the playing field. So let's say ball get position. Oh, let's rename this to ball. It's nicer. Ball get position x. If it's equal or less to zero, then um, the computer is scored and we will ask our physics engine to remove the ball. And we'll also add a new one. Again at position 400 by 300. And we will do the same thing if the ball has left. If we have scored, we have scored if x is bigger or equal than 8. So now we need to add uh, the bats. So first again we create the sprite. This is the player. Add it at location 10, um, 62, 
dimension 30 by 75. And again, look up empty. Because the physics engine will take care to uh, add the payload basically to the lookup. So again, we'll ask the physics engine to create the default body for us. That. This time it's a body type kinematic because we do not want uh, the physics engine to simulate it, but we will apply forces to it and uh, do everything that is required. And what else do we need to do? We need to set restitution, friction. Let's add some friction because then we can uh, influence how the, um, how the ball is bouncing. And what is the last parameter? Density, we do not need density for a kinematic body. So let's add the sprite to the canvas. Actually, we do not need you need to do that because we won't um, we won't use the rendering of the canvas, but we will use the debug layer, the debug rendering. So our bat needs an action. Say key code A. Uh, this time it's a sprite action. And this is called with an animation and a name string. So we don't need to animate it because um, we will use the debug or default rendering. And we will overwrite start method. Do something in the beginning. So again we will get uh, the lookup and look up the body. And on this body, we will apply forces. We will um, first have a, well, no, let's just apply forces. Body set linear uh, lookup. Set linear velocity. say four and when we release the key we do the same thing this time set the velocity back to uh, zero and we need another of these actions with a key code of Y. Which does the down movement. Okay, and now we need our opponent. So let's create a new sprite. Is a computer and we'll add it at position 750 by 262 and make it 30 pixels wide and 75 pixels long. Again, lookups empty, that's okay. Mm. And we will use the physics engine to create a default body for this. The nice thing about this is that it automatically does the, um, the scaling for us. So 
So again, we make it bouncy. Give it some restitution. Uh, give it some friction, and it doesn't need a density. But what it needs is some logic. So we will add a behavior. And from this behavior, we will return true because we want our action to be always active. So this time we will try to find out where we are in the playing field, where the computer is, <coughs> and make it follow the uh, Y position of the ball. So this is me, and we also want uh, the ball, so we we'll ask the canvas by playing field. And if the ball exists, let's do something. So, ball get lookup, lookup body. y is greater than me get position y then let's set some velocity no don't know velocity don't know velocity and oh, that should work so this will make our um, our opponent follow the position of the ball. Okay. Now the only thing we probably need to do is we need to somehow add our <coughs> canvas to the scene. So we need a border pane as the layout. We can add it. And we will add it to the scene. And that's it. Now let's try if we can run it. This doesn't look like as it's 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 very nice for me. It doesn't look like I've got an opponent. So let's see what's wrong here. I've got the sprite. 
Let's auto completion. And one more thing that we need to do is we need our canvas to request the focus in the scene. So we will get um, the mouse, uh, the, the key events. Let's again try. Okay, looks a bit better. We can move the bat. What's wrong with the behavior here? Mm, okay. The problem is. That <coughs> so, what I forgot to do is I need to add the sprite to the canvas in order of to have the behaviors running. Okay, let's make it 800 by 600. So our game should work now. And we can play Pong. So this was the new physics engine. Um, thanks for watching.